Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. We got some good stuff to go over today from the Boston Fed to the IMF to Bitcoin whales and holding sentiment. There's definitely never a boring day in crypto. If you guys could do me a favor and tap that like button, that would be greatly appreciated. And we're just going to go ahead and start diving right on into this video today. So Boston Fed is looking at 30 to 40 blockchain networks for digital dollar experiments. Now this article is pretty long. Uh, so I, I read through and I picked some stuff that uh, that I thought was worth noting in this video. The Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, which is one of 20 12 regional Federal Reserve banks operating under the U.S. Central Bank is evalu evaluating more than 30 different blockchain networks to determine if they would support a digital dollar. They say what we're doing now really is much more thorough, much more building a platform to see whether distributed ledger can meet the needs of a U.S.-based central bank digital currency. Can it actually function? I would think we're probably looking at 30 to 40 different either open source or private solutions at a very high level first and then doing a deeper dive into a few of them because we're in the early stages of this and we want to make sure we have the broadest view possible kuna said uh, they also go on to say we're excited about this collaboration because dci's goal is to answer the fundamental questions necessary to determine under what circumstances a cbdc is a good idea and how we might deploy one should a central bank decide to do so she said working closely with one of the largest central banks in the world is incredibly helpful in terms of getting real-time input on how to frame and answer these questions as we go down they also say we don't want to take some brand new consensus algorithm or cryptographic protocol and use it for a country's national currency Beyond the basic questions, the Boston Fed wants to know how issues like throughput and privacy might be affected if participants are required to pass Know Your Customer or KYC and anti-money laundering checks. We're not getting granular with this. We're not trying to design and think about product design down to the level of how would someone unbank to use this. We're trying to be flexible enough to allow innovation to answer some of those problems. And I thought that was very interesting, uh, basically the ending of that sentence saying we're allowing for innov innovation to answer some of those problems. Uh, my biggest takeaway from that is that the central banks and the Fed, they don't want to go and create their own system. They don't want to you know, build these things from the ground floor up. They want private public relationships. Uh, they, they want somebody else to already do the work. Like they said, they don't want to innovate. Um, they want to partner with the innovators. So you can think Ripple and XRP. You can think Stellar Lumens and XLM. And they said they're running on 30 to 40 different blockchain networks. But I'm pretty sure they probably already know or have a very good idea uh, already kind of selected down of who they're most likely going with. I would go so far as to say that they probably already have determined which one they're going with, and this is just kind of all for show. Um, I have I have no way to prove that. That's just my own speculation. I just tend to think that things are planned out far more in advance, uh, far more early than we even become aware of these types of things. Now, if we go down, I thought this was funny as well. The Boston Fed has been looking at D uh, DLT technology since 2015 or 16, Kuna said, and has published numerous papers on the subject. The group has also looked at similar central bank digital currency and payment efforts by other central banks. Uh, they say our goal really was to understand distributed ledgers and how it was unfolding. The goal hasn't changed. While private digital currency efforts like Libra and CBDC projects like China's Digital Yuan may have created a bit more urgency to the Boston Fed and DCI's work. So so they are admitting that the digital wand did create more urgency, which we all knew, of course. There's no mandate or timeline to launch a digital dollar buy. It just creates more interest in the project. I, I, I think they're definitely trying to push a digital dollar. Um, I, I, I definitely don't think they're just going to be sitting around, uh, you know, waiting on it forever. I, I do think that there is a some type of timeline that they are following. Um, they have to get this stuff rolling before China, you know, gets their stuff com completely out the door and other countries just start adopting it, right? Um, that's the main thing. Are we really going to want the, or mainly is the U.S. government really going to want the world operating on a digital wand, or do they want to drop the digital dollar and try to maintain that reserve status if they can at, at, at all? So interesting read nonetheless, guys. I recommend you all to go and, and read the entirety of this on your own. Um, I got this from Coindesk, and uh, that's the title right there. So definitely go and give it a read whenever you guys have some time. Uh, moving on to Twitter, we got this from the IMF posted a, a couple days ago, so I'm just going to let this play. When we buy or sell things, the payment is usually processed by a bank or credit card company. Problem number one. 
the companies often take a cut of the transaction. Two, we have to trust these companies to protect their sensitive data from hackers. Three, most international payments take a long time and are expensive. To solve these problems, we could use a special currency that is secure and based on the science of cryptography, which is a way of protecting information using mathematics. This special type of currency is called a cryptocurrency and only exists in computer networks. When you send someone the special currency, the money goes directly to them, removing the middleman. And at the same time, the transaction is broadcast to the entire network and recorded in a permanent way, which means it's almost impossible to fool the system. Costs of making payments are lower, transactions are faster, especially across countries, and even those people around the globe who don't have bank accounts can buy or sell goods and participate in the global economy. However, there are some risks. The transactions in most cryptocurrencies are anonymous. Some cryptocurrencies can even be untraceable. This can make it easier for the bad guys to make payments without being noticed. If you lose your password, you could lose all your money. At the moment, cryptocurrencies are highly volatile. They can't process large amounts of transactions quickly yet, and they're not even widely accepted. But if we can counter the risks, then this new technology, or some variation of it, can completely change the way we sell, buy, save, invest, and pay our bills. And who knows, this could be the next step in the evolution of money. Interesting stuff nonetheless, guys. Um, we have the IMF putting out, at least posting, whether they made this early or not. I saw some people saying that, that this is an old video. Um, but the fact that they are they are reposting and basically educating on cryptocurrencies, talking about them, um, this is obviously the direction that they want to take us. Whether this video goes out and gets a thousand views or whether it goes out and gets 10 million views uh, doesn't really matter because this is the agenda that they have in play um, and, and it's what they want to bring about, right? The, the world or at least the people running this world want cryptocurrencies. They get a lot of benefits out of it. So like I always say, expect to see more of this because this is where we are heading we also have 243 million dollar bitcoin transfer turns heads as one of the wealthiest crypto whales on earth awakens a big time anonymous crypto holder just moved all of his bitcoin in one of the richest wallets in existence sending 19,722 btc worth more than 243 million for a fee of 139 dollars the transaction was first cited by a whale watch bot whale alert the sending wallet which first received the Bitcoin in December of 2018 was ranked as the 37th biggest Bitcoin address in the world prior to the transaction. According to the latest blockchain data, the whale moved the Bitcoin to an empty BTC wallet. The receiving wallet then redistributed the Bitcoin to a flurry of different addresses in 195.2 BTC chunks, with the exception of one address, which was sent in even 200 Bitcoin. So far, the cryptocurrency does not appear to be heading to any known crypto exchange addresses, or it could be sold in the open market. Since none of the addresses have been identified, it's unknown if the BTC belongs to an early investor or an institution managing large sums of money um so interesting nonetheless guys we're just seeing basically a big wallet at least this is what it looks like to me a big wallet distributing all of that bitcoin in that one wallet into multiple wallets uh i would say probably you know they're you know especially since we're expecting uh price increases for bitcoin um definitely securing it further right like i say um if you're if you're anticipating your bitcoin to be worth or not even bitcoin but any crypto to be worth in the six figure or seven figure range treat it as as such now um so if we have this guy with 243 million you know maybe he's expecting to become a, a multi-billionaire when bitcoin reaches you know 100 200 dollars i would be splitting up that wallet as well I don't think I'd want a billion dollars sitting in any one wallet if I were anticipating becoming a billionaire. Now, Bitcoin holding sentiment is strongest in nearly two years. So this is just some more uh, metrics like this. We've been seeing these all month, guys. And I think we're going to see it more and more. You're, we've already tipped the point where there are more Bitcoin addresses now than there were at when Bitcoin was at its old all-time high uh, in back in 2017 
uh, at twenty thousand, almost twenty thousand dollars. So we've already passed that hurdle at this point. You know, unless if a lot of people sell off their Bitcoin and these wallets, uh, you know, drop down to zero Bitcoin, which you know, how likely and how probable is that scenario? Um, I don't think it's very likely at all. We're just going to see more and more of this. You know, more strong sentiment, uh, more you know, stronger hands, more wallets, more coin accumulation, uh, more people coming in in general, more people participating, more people becoming aware, more people becoming educated um welcome to adoption this is what this is now we also have china's communist party eyes blockchain for decentralizing social services beijing's strategic vision is to use blockchain tech artificial intelligence big data and 5g and social assistance system reforms now it's hard for me to figure out exactly what is social assistance system reforms um and the article doesn't really do too good of a job of really saying exactly what these are but I thought this was interesting. So this says for this to work, the party notes it is gradually working towards establishing nationwide connectivity and digitizing social security systems. Its strategic vision is to use blockchain tech, artificial intelligence, big data and 5G and social assistance provisions. Um, big biggest thing, it's like I'm seeing this as, as smart cities, right? I think that the main thing they're trying to push across here is it's going to be whatever a social assistance means within the smart cities because the smart cities are going to be run on what i mean they basically tell you right here on 5g data ai and blockchain technology so you know we'll see what comes of this i would say if there's if there's going to be like a first smart city it's probably definitely going to come out of some eastern country maybe china maybe singapore but i definitely think it'll be in in the east first where there is a, a massive you know like a globally recognized okay that is a real life smart city if you guys understand what i'm saying now for prices today we have bitcoin at 11.4 uh ethereum at 385 xrp at 27 point nine chain link at fourteen dollars litecoin at 59 cardano at 11 cents stellar at nine cents look like looks like most of the market is pulling back uh v chain is at 1.7 cents we have dash at 87 dollars maker at 637 so we're having a bit of a pullback guys we'll see what happens if you're invested into crypto for the long term, if you're looking at, you know, not even exiting your positions until, you know, the top of the next cycle, then don't even worry about these pullbacks. Uh, at this point, if you're if you're in here for the long term, uh, which I think most of us here are, then these pullbacks are meant as buying opportunities. You know, that doesn't mean you should go all in. You should always have some fresh capital on the side ready to deploy at all times because you never know how low we could go or you never know if you might find another good opportunity elsewhere so always keep your cash on hand but always keep in mind that when you see these low prices uh, they aren't things to get shaken out at or to start you know um, i don't know doing anything other than taking advantage of the buying opportunities our fear and greed index for today is at 75 so we are still in greed maintaining in greed and uh, we will see what happens if you guys like the video make sure you subscribe where you get a video like this daily we go over bitcoin altcoins and everything going on in the crypto space i hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did make sure you drop it a like i always appreciate any support you guys choose to give so likes comments everything like that is greatly greatly appreciated we have finally hit 7,000 subscribers guys so thank you all uh for making this uh basically documenting of research and news absolutely awesome and i'm excited to go forward and experience this bull run that is coming experience this wealth transfer that is coming with all of you i hope you guys all have a great rest of your days and i will see you all on the next video